Hi there, and welcome to episode 82 of the ADHD Adults Podcast. I'm James Brown, the man for whom hunting usually means for his phone, and as usual, I'm joined by the man who owns a forest just about big enough to hunt his victims, Dr. Alex Connor, and we're again joined by somebody who gathers chaos and distributes it specially for you, Mrs. ADHD. Hi, Alex. I'd man's hile to you, James. Explain. It's a hunter's greeting from the uh from from the like the Austria Bavarian Hungary regions Weidmann's Heil and and if you, if you said it to hunter they say thank you it kind of means good luck on the hunt but if you also hunter they say Weidmann's Heil back to you there's a I didn't I mean yeah, the Heil I bit's mean, a bit dodgy you, isn't it? good killing you to you good killing to you, you could have just you could have just said it's a hunter's greeting and stopped couldn't you I could yeah there's a Rammstein yeah. song called Weidmann's oh, Heil shut, worth, shut, worth a listen is it mm. And Sam, hi. Um, hi. There you go. That's what I like. How are you both, Mrs. ADHD? First, I'm all right. Okay. And <laughs> Alex, <laughs> I'm excellent, thank you. Our audience and I notice what you've done to the script, James. Our audience carries on growing like my head, which is exactly as wide as it is long, and that that baffles us. <laughs> Not the head, not my head. The listener number baffles us. But James, one of them has sent us a letter. Hi, Dad. No, this one's from oh. Sylvia from Kidderminster. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Hi, Mum. It says, it says, dear team, long time listener, first time writer. <laughs> It says, James promised me that when his dad passed away, I could do these letters, but the little shit forgot. Thank you, Sylvia. But just to correct you, he's a, he's a massive, great shit, not a little one. I don't think the letters from mum would be as nice as the ones from dad. But um, yeah, interesting. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> They've only been nice recently because of the awkwardness. <laughs> <laughs> We've, had <it. laughs> We've had a real letter. And I am 99% certain we have not read this one out before. I mean, 1%. <laughs> Hi, both and all involved. Thank you for the heaviest penny drop in my whole li misunderstood life. Listening to your podcast, I've realized it's not me. It's my undiagnosed ADHD. The most incredible thing is not the first part of your podcast, a bit rude. Your personal experience <laughs> and reflection literally <laughs> describes my life. You have got permission to use my name, James. We have. Sorry, already bored of writing. You're doing an incredible thing for people, James. We've got permission to use their name. Wow, yeah. and it's, it's just on. Oh, you have remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's just on. I actually just underneath, went Alex. through. I noticed that you'd picked one purposely that I cropped <laughs> off the name. So I went through all the messages on Instagram last night and found their name. Thanks, Sebastian. <laughs> oh, Sebastian, and your surname as well is German. I'm very strong suggesting that is a German name. Thank you. I, I, I think the, the take-home message is the first part of the podcast is poor, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit. We also, I'm sure we've read, we haven't read that out, but someone else has said it's the heaviest penny before, because we thought, um, James, haven't we, about calling... That's, yeah. That's we, yeah. This tells the, people all the time that. Uh, maybe it is. The heaviest penny was going to be the name of our yeah. book. Internationally, oh. we're still increasing by oh, what must now be accepted as ludicrous and made up. Let me check... <laughs> One country a week, and it is again. <laughs> Let me check. Uh, 145 countries. The new oh, country wow. is Tanzania. Tanzania. Oh, no. And we've de so, let me say, probably for the first time, maybe second. I mean, we have definitely done this before. It's impossible yeah. to ever know. No one can check. A big <laughs> old deer. Oh, oh, a big. Ooh. Oh, oh. Abari Tangazo Caribou <laughs> to a uh, possibly definitely single listener base there or listener who has visited the support and used free Wi Fi 35 times. The support, the country. How many it's countries visited. have we actually got? 145, Sam. Yeah, as no, you've, just, you've, many just, <coughs> you've just, you've just, you've just, Ron did that. You've just, Ron Bergen did that, haven't you? By mm, reading out what yeah. was on the script without thinking. Visited yeah, the yeah, support. The country. I meant the country. <laughs> Anyway, as usual, <clears throat> go anyway, fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> as usual, this 1980s school toilet roll, also known as greaseproof paper, that could exponentially increase the amount of shit in your ass cleft of a podcast, is a tragedy in three parts. We choose a theme. Last week was 
not about the subject that's in there. Last week was about seasonal affective disorder and ADHD. Are you sure no, it, it wasn't, wasn't about late diagnosis? Oh, God. See, I've, we've got it all wrong, haven't we, because of the numbers? Yeah, it's about, sorry, it was about late diagnosis of ADHD <laughs> with the brilliant Hannah Walker-Brown. Fuck that right up. Brilliant. But all and this, week, this, just and this week, and this week, which is definitely this week, not three weeks' time or two weeks' time, we're focusing on something that's increasingly being talked about as people are writing about it in books and stuff. And that is that ADHD, um, if you like, is evolutionarily preserved from when we were hunter gatherers. And then it's all when we became hunter farmers and modern society's fault for us having ADHD. Okay. The three parts, as usual, include Alex the Psycho education monkey verbally masturbating about adhd and evolution Hello. our personal reflections <laughs> on the topic and and the third and you know what i don't i don't even know how we do top tips on this top tips for what being a hunter i mean alex loves evolution <laughs> learning how to gather hey how to evolve we didn't really think this very did we no. <laughs> so Alex, I know that we're going to talk about a time that's pre-Henry VIII, you know, and, and the Reformation, which means you'll get bored. So before you do, tell us about the ADHD hunter-gatherer theory. So, thank you. As I've explained before, James, this <laughs> is not the hunter-gatherer theory. It's a hypothesis, not a theory. Fuck you now. Which is a proven hypothesis, or, or even a theorem. If it were mathematical and proven, that's not important behaviour. How we behave is defined as the way any organism responds to stimuli in its current environment. So our behaviours as people with ADHD are often different. I mean, both from each other often and also from the behaviours of people who don't have it, the thing. One branch of evolutionary biology studies how natural selection shapes our behaviour by its survival value in general in the population. Right, sorry about this. We have to tell you something about evolutionary advantage and survival of the fittest. They probably don't mean what you think they mean. They might do. So advantage doesn't mean good, and fittest doesn't mean fittest. Sorry. <laughs> Those two words mean that any behaviour or trait stayed in the population longer. That's it. Nothing else. Sometimes for a reason, but equally as likely just a completely random event that it's happened to stay in rather than any actual advantage. It could be blind luck that a trait happened to be common in a place where there was lots of food, for example. So it hung around like a bad smell, James. So <laughs> things being an evolutionary advantage is only ever past tense. Evolution doesn't predict. It's not going anywhere. There's no drive for evolution. It doesn't tell you anything about what will happen next or what is, in inverted commas or rabbit ears, best. Some traits obviously were dead useful. Like an aardvark's tongue. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Some weren't useful at all, but hung around like James's hair. But advantage and fitness, survival of fitness, just means these did survive, past tense. Boring, I know, but important. And yet, yeah. it's still a common belief that psychiatric disorders defined as those significant behavioural or psychological patterns associated to distress, disability, increased risk of... Suffering, death, pain, disability, loss of freedom are in general correlated with lower fitness, which, remember, only means lower likelihood of surviving in a population over time and therefore are less likely to be passed down to our children. So, we're, I don't know, we're probably about 10 minutes in. You know what I'm going to say? Yes. Oh, ADHD, so much, so much. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that staying now? Is, is that staying? Is it? The only like accent it. I can do. <laughs> In contrast well. with these findings, <laughs> early studies looking at ADHD suggested that ADHD had some genetic variants, which is a posh word for mutations, James, which is a posh word for changes. It's from the Middle French, mutation, <laughs> James, yeah. from the Old French for mutation, borrowed from Latin mutatio, mutationum. And, uh, you know that. Anyway, these mutations <laughs> found in the early stages of ADHD genetics, when we started looking at them, suggest that there may be a possible selective advantage of ADHD. Massive klaxon should be ADHD traits. Hmm. Tom Hartman wrote a famous book, very popular, hypothesized that ADHD was um, because we hadn't adapted. So it's the lack of adaptation of members of hunter-gatherer societies to like farming societies. That's really easy to see why. 
it's a seductive idea that in a hunter-gatherer society, those of us that were less attentive might be ones distracted by an animal or a rival tribe sneaking. And when you, you put those people on a farm, lots of boring tasks to do, it's less positive. Now, I subscribe 100% fully to this. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is it makes me feel cool and powerful. I'm a hunter, not a boring <laughs> gatherer. <laughs> well, we know you hunt people, Alex, but I don't imagine yes, you would I be part of, the, part of the hunting element of whatever group of people you would have been 35,000 years ago. Unfortunately, <laughs> you like this show? Unfortunately, when you look deeper, it can seem to fall apart quite a little bit, this hypothesis. Well, quite a lot, in fact, especially on the hunter part. It's been suggested that people with ADHD will be able to hyperfocus on tracking an animal for hours on end. Again, it might make sense if you glance at it, hunting, but, and studies have shown this, it's really, really hard. Ding. Possibly impossible to choose what you hyperfocus on when you have ADHD. And hyperfocus can't be switched on at will. So a hunter is just as likely to have been hyperfocused on a really nice tree. <laughs> example so you've told us some stuff most of it opinion i guess as you as you you are i suppose charged with doing the evidence-based bit of this is there any evidence can you give us some evidence or is it just you talking it's evidence james there is genetic mutations have evidence to support so some dopamine receptor mutants and we know that increases the risk of having adhd obviously very frequent which evolutionary terms suggests they might have been positively selected or, or just more common. Essentially, they were kept around in the gene pool as they are advantageous, either by luck or judgment. This suggests that these mutations have provided some form of advantage in the past, maybe. So it's, it's true, then. Well, that's the thing, James. Probably a bit for the trait of ADHD. Not necessarily the disorder, as usual, there is evidence supporting and not supporting the idea, as the always is in science. Our ability to study genes has advanced, and this hypothesis now isn't really supported. There is evidence that it looks a bit possible. One study on the, the most common mutations in ADHD, called dopamine receptor 4, which is cool, showed that it had not undergone positive selection, meaning it hadn't been selected by evolution as being an advantage. For Even more recently, a really brilliant study looking at ancient human and Neanderthal, genes from the Neander Valley in Germany, <laughs> which, by the way, Mrs. ADHD has more of than usual. Isn't that right? <laughs> it's not a lie, is it? No, it's not. Well, I don't know. Well, a, relative, a first degree relative of yours recently did a DNA test, which came up oh, with yeah, a higher yeah. than average amount of Neanderthal genes. So it's, it's, it's likely, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, my God. Yeah. Lord yeah, of the Rings so is true. Fun. If I can... <laughs> no, no, it's yeah. not. They also looked at 50,000, more than 50,000 modern day folks. And the frequency of these so-called ADHD risk mutations has been reducing evolutionarily over the past, this is the thing, 35,000 years. And so they did notice this disadvantage. So kind of preceding the office environment just a smidge. <laughs> so it again, it is true. It's not, I'm getting Maybe. confused. Maybe, I know. So what another study said that the Northern European populations now have signatures of recent, like less than 2,000 years, genetic changes. And also Neanderthal DNA carried more ADHD risk alleles than current samples. So Neander Neanderthal were, were maybe super ADHD. They, they, they did not survive. <laughs> I the think you missed, a good you missed a vampire joke there, I think. <laughs> recent signatures oh, yeah, of yeah, 2,000 yeah. years ago, you know, when James was... <laughs> It's it big, that's an open Jesus. goal. <laughs> yeah, open, open goal, mate. Uh, damn it. Right, so here's the message, final message. Traits of ADHD are important and may be useful. They are important for everyone in the whole population. A bit like how we don't want to be massively too tall or too short as humans. It's good that we have some shorter, some taller people. So the average is about right. But to maintain that variability, some people's genetics accidentally have too much or too little of them. So they might be way too tall or way too short that isn't healthy anymore or even helpful. But for the population, all of that means there is enough variability for the average. So it might be actually that ADHD people diagnosed aren't really the hunters themselves, but we are taking one for the team. We're the ones Dang. that are at the extremes. <laughs> Thank you. With all the traits. 
So the average population can have a healthy and helpful amount of impulsiveness, hyperactivity, and ability to sometimes get distracted when needed. Your welcome population. <laughs> So with the thought of Alex taking one for the team, fresh in our minds, we'll take a break and we'll be back for part two, personal reflections on being a hunter or gatherer or something. No idea. Bye. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Jesus already. Welcome back to episode 80 probably, two. of the ADHD 82. Adults podcast. 82. 82. 82. <laughs> Part two, we are talking, as always, about our personal reflections. And we're doing this, we're doing our personal reflections of the evolutionary hypothesis of hunter together with theory. So, James? <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Mm. Oh, God. See, I have to make a shit sandwich out of this, Arnold, because it includes praise for you. <clears throat> I'd read a bit about this after somebody on Twitter um, added me saying, oh, what do you think about the hunter-gatherer theory? And before I replied, I thought, I'll do a quick read of a few papers and find one of the ones that suggested that the genes actually hadn't been positively selected. They've been reducing in number. So I answered as saying, well, actually, the genetic evidence suggests it's not true. And then mentioned the kind of hyper-focus thing for hunters. Um, and obviously, I'm not fully right. And what I what I like that you said is it's about the traits and not the disorder and that kind of makes sense is that is that a little bit of impulsiveness a little bit of risk taking means you find that new food because somebody went oh well I'll, yeah i'll have a go at it and it wasn't poisonous and it was great a little bit of uh, impulsiveness and taking risk for example would be useful if you wanted to find new lands or to to, to you know murder the neanderthals in the the near valley and again, that kind of uh, lack of full attention to something may have been an advantage in terms of noticing things like that. So it, I, I can't. There's part of me that kind of wants to accept it as a good idea, but I think you're probably right that the traits are really useful. But if you had the full disorder, if you like, I think at any point during history, and you had massive rejection sensitivity and emotional dysregulation, if they existed back then, and you know you couldn't listen to somebody when they were talking to you I, I i don't imagine that i think you'd be beaten to death to be honest al clubbed to death i think so too um the, sam and i are laughing if you can hear us apologize because i accidentally <laughs> wrote <laughs> full-blown adhd in the script and realized you can't really say you can't use that term anymore <laughs> compared to having the trait so i apologize for that i, I think I, I like it so yeah so i suppose i i don't fully accept it but i definitely see how parts of it make sense um, I'm going to go for a poo, so I'll leave you two to it. What? Is he actually gone? For... He's actually gone. I mean, we can edit in post. He could have paused it. What about you, Sam? What's your reflections on the hunter gatherer hypothesis? Please, not Lord of the Rings. Oh God, that's what I was going to talk about. <laughs> I'm so made up, though, that it's real. But um, I don't it's really know. No, but it, that's how it was, wasn't it? There were lots of different things like humans not... types of human types of human is that what they yes. were yeah they were sort of essentially different species of human coexisting species is a tricky term because there's no actual definition of the word but they, they some of them didn't look like us some of them they were all different yeah, yeah. like in lord of they the were all... yeah 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 different hominid groups yeah um obviously i have no idea um but <clears throat> it's a false alarm uh... oh good are you turtling yeah no, not even no. turtlings. Nothing. Nothing happened. Not, let's not do this. So, Sam, oh, okay. I don't like that phrase. Um, I, I don't really know to be honest. But it, it's, it sounds like. I mean, you wouldn't want loads of people. You wouldn't choose, surely. Well, I don't know how it works, but you wouldn't want to keep ADHD in the population, would you? Unless the traits were valuable to have a few of them. Well, that's what but... that's what you've just said, isn't it? Yeah, but but it could also be that actual ADHD people were the winners, the superpowers back in the day, and now we're not. You know, that's this. That is this I mean, hypothesis. I can't imagine that. <laughs> it doesn't seem bloody I'm likely, does it? I'm medicated, and I can barely cope with life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I had to go out and hunt animals, I'd be a wreck. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we're starving to death, Alex. I don't want to. I'd rather look at this flower today. I literally <laughs> can't move. 
of flu- I've lost my axe again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stepping over all your hunting weapons as you leave for the hunting. You're looking around and you just got these clawless little hands and there's a saber tooth fucking tiger right there. I regret, I regret leaving my axe in the cave. Right. Good, right. No one's asking me, oh, James. Oh, I know sorry. how you feel. Alex, what yeah. about you? What do you th- feel, think? Uh, I've written in the script, nah, load of bollocks. Also, maybe it's true. I do not know. Um, because that's the lovely thing about science, I think, is that there is no fact, not one in science, not really. There's only likely and less likely. So I think personally, it's probably varying on the less likely for ADHD, very likely for the traits being useful. Look, fishing and hunting are boring. They're they're boring things to do for me. That It feels like sitting in a tree or on a bank waiting for ages might be a shared problem for a lot a lot of people with ADHD seems you told me that the hunting part was the, your favorite part of murdering <laughs> I don't do murder you're all about no. the hunt <laughs> because of the reward I you know proper pursuit predation it, it would be exciting as opposed to the the sort of relentless slow <laughs> predation that some <laughs> creatures do this isn't about me I'm not, I'm not... <laughs> can I can I, I, can I quit can I challenge that just a tiny bit? Yeah. Because one of the things that you say is if you've met one person with ADHD, you've met one person with ADHD. So yeah. the you did and you did say for me, fishing and hunting are really boring. I suppose there will be people with ADHD for whom they do get reward and and love it. So you're absolutely right. And can find a hyper focus on it, even if they don't want to. So they'd be brilliant, wouldn't they? You're right. Maybe maybe this is impossible then to to yeah. until we need get more evidence. You're right. I and thinking about it, I've been fishing once. It was nice. It was sunny, and <laughs> when I was drinking, I, I think I loved like, it. I, just... I want to do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like I like drinking. All I would if I could still do that. I would. I, I think it was more the drinking. Oh. Amazing, right? Obviously, I didn't right. hear the, your your two bits because uh, I was off somewhere else. So, but we have got time for um, uh, the greatest game. Yeah, the greatest game ever. Oh, for fuck's sake, I've got two screens on. I can't. Oh, there it is. Brilliant. Right, <clears throat> you've got two... <clears throat> professionalism in this podcast. <laughs> I mean, th- th- those two, they, they, they don't go together. Right, you've got two choices, glasses and laptops. Ooh. I will have laptops, please. I fucking knew you would. We'll talk Good We'll choice. talk about this more in Thursday's episode. So, <clears throat> uh, I recently was given a brand spanking new work laptop which within two days I left on a train and it's gone. So the question is, um, after mislaying or losing this laptop, what was my response? Did I get stuck on that? Was I lost it on the second train. Did I get stuck on the third train? Because that's where I realized I'd lost it and the doors closed before I could get off because I was frantically checking the third train. So did I get stuck on the train afterwards as soon as I realized? That's option one. Option two is when I got to the place I was going, which was for a meeting, did I end up going in entirely the wrong room because I was just all over the place mentally and sat there for an hour and then realised where I should be? And option three is, did I just stand motionless at the train station for about 20 minutes? That's a really good one. They're all things I've done in that stressful situation. Uh... Oh, do you mean third train you checked, or you were on the third train you took? I was on the I was on the third train when I realised. Hang on a minute, where's where's the other laptop? And, and it was just as I was pulling into the the station I was arriving at. Right, I think that it isn't the third train because the chances of you getting on three chains and not being pulled <laughs> over by the police is unlikely. I don't think you spent an hour in the wrong room because you can't spend an hour in any room without wandering <laughs> off so it's paralyzed you stood on the platform paralyzed for 20 minutes oh look at his face i can tell Come yes we, we all know you'd pick that one sam because you said yeah i'd go with that one very quietly <laughs> i didn't hear it oh yeah no you're right yeah, yeah. so i almost got sam i almost winning. got caught 
Four three, yeah, four three. Oh, I almost got caught that. on the train. I actually had to. I stopped the doors on the train, stood in between them, and stopped them because I was so panicking. Don't know what to if do. It's on this, yeah, if it's on this train, and so ran quickly back in, looked everywhere, then sprinted out as the doors were closing. I didn't go to the wrong room, but I did sit in a room for an hour because really? I'd got the start time wrong, and I just sat there thinking, where, where is everyone? But yeah, no, I got when I got to the station, I just stood there for twenty minutes. Wanted a fag, but didn't have a light, and I just stood there like, what, what, what do I do? Oh, what do I do? Completely understand. I've done that paralysis. I do it all the time. If, I, if I'm at the kitchen sometimes, and I don't know whether to wash up a cup or go and put something back in the fridge, I won't do either, and I'll just stand there. And I don't, yeah. I can't. It's failure to launch, isn't it? And it's I think it's when you've got function. decisions to make, and you can't make the decisions. Yeah, it, it, it is literally a symptom of ADHD. Yeah, it, it's overwhelm as well. I was, I mean, I, I will talk about as this well, on yeah. Thursday. I was obviously in a really bad place anyway, and this just added to that fucking heap of shit. And it was just, I, I just felt completely overwhelmed with, oh my god, I, I'm going to get sacked. And yet, the, the, the response to me losing it, which we'll talk about on Thursday, was brilliant. It was just like, ah, I don't know what to do. I uh, on the plus side though, I win in your shit game. <laughs> three, three. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Time for a, time for a break. See you for the worst ever top tipics in the history oh. of this podcast in part three. See you later. Trump. See you later. Welcome back to episode eighty-two of the ADHD Adults Podcast, where we're talking about ADHD and the hunter gather theory. The hunter gatherer theory. <laughs> this is part three where we give you our top tips on hunter gathering like how to do it or what i guess yeah. so i don't know mm, so we all just stare at each other or do you want to choose someone um oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, james go on oh yeah so obviously i haven't got the same level of experience of hunting people as alex so what i would what i would say what i would say is we talked about this a lot, and again, I don't want to give Alex credit, but I do like his. If you've met one person with ADHD, you've met one person with ADHD. Um, quote, which he probably stole, um, and so therefore, you know, you be you. There are people that, um, th that read books because let's face it, nobody reads scientific articles. They are very fucking boring, and they are written in language to stop people who aren't scientists from understanding them. So that's one of the reasons yeah. some popular scientists write books. What I would say is <laughs> books can often be opinions. And I'll give the example of Gabor Mate, and somebody at one of my talks, Alex, came up and said um, they're a big fan of, of his work and explained their ADHD because they had had a traumatic experience. And I said, that, that's fine. I, I think it's important that you can accept that. And they went on to say, you know, have you read his book? And I said, no, I you know, tend to read the literature. And they said, well, he's even got case studies in there. Now, case studies are kind of the second lowest level of evidence, particularly if they're not um, biological and you've measured something that's quantifiable like a gene being mutated or something in the blood if it's a psychological or psychiatric case study it is the opinion of somebody I saw this person and I think this is at the root of their problems and therefore if you're going to read a book and genuinely want to, to to kind of see if you like if it is an opinion or fact they'll often be referenced so often a good book will have either notes at the bottom of the page or a list of references at the back where they've taken information from you know evidence-based sources to help form their opinion so for things like this that's all i'd say is you can kind of believe what you want but please don't challenge me at my talks because i'm fragile what about you yeah. sam <laughs> oh he is fragile top tips <laughs> Top tips, yeah, yeah for hunting together a theory. Don't challenge James at his talks. He's <laughs> yeah, that's. He's very much a gatherer. Say, yeah. That's normal. That's normally my position. What about you, Al? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I should do the joke that I wrote. <laughs> I put for my top tips here is when hunting people, make sure you have a territorial <laughs> advantage. <laughs> <laughs> All warned is forearmed. <laughs> And I know I don't need to say this, but a constrictor knot is the most effective ligature <laughs> knot. <laughs> no, not really. So, so, so essentially, this is about understanding the terms and context of what evolution is. People, in, including me, want evolution to be a sort of drive for better, for improving. It isn't. It, it isn't. That's not what evolution is. It's an observation. 
of what has happened in the past. And nobody knows. Nobody knows why traits survived. We only guess. People want to explain why we are different, because we are different. And, and that might be possible. It might be possible to explain why. But explaining why he sells books and is probably messy. There's a really famous quote. For every complex question, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. And I think assigning all ADHD to ADHD to trauma. Some ADHD is definitely caused by trauma. Assigning ADHD, all ADHD to we were the hunters as sort of a separate group. All of that is clear and simple and, and makes sense and makes you feel good and is almost certainly at least partially wrong. Is that the most depressing fucking thing ever? No. Did I, I wasn't listening. I don't know. Um, <laughs> That's all yeah. Saying. So... Product recommendation of the week is, if you've got the money, do a genetic test and see if you are more Neanderthal than Mrs. ADHD is. Seriously, though, I think this is important, and I'll talk about this in the next, in Thursday's episode. Oh. Um, I, I did a DNA test about 10 years ago, and it's only now I've looked back at the mutations I've got that I've gone, ha, ah, that all makes sense now. Um, so we'll talk about that on Thursday. So I didn't do. I didn't do a uh, that a SNP test, as they call it, for mutations, but yeah. my brother did a, a lineage DNA test, and it just came back pathetic. Just like, <laughs> same, same. You've just this one small part of England forever, mm. pathetic. Where well, you can download all of that data and put it through a, uh, a website that gives him all of his SNPs compared to papers. It's called it's called Prometheus. Cost you twelve dollars to do it. I personally I think it's worth it. Right, anyway, that was episode 82 of the ADHD Adults podcast, ADHD and the Hunter-Gatherer Hypothesis, which is also the name of the fourth Harry Potter book. If Probably. somehow you've enjoyed this episode, why not support the charity on the link provided? Because otherwise Alex will have to dress up as a Neanderthal and be a living exhibit in actually in a museum. You'd probably love that, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have to dress up, really, to be honest. Not really. No. Okay. As usual, if you want to get in touch, contact us via the socials at the ADHD adults. I got it right this week. Um, and maybe through Discord, which is growing all the time. It's now very big. It's probably not just a, a squirrel rave. It's a squirrel festival now. We will see you on Thursday. See you then. See you then. Hi, all. Trigger warning, clacks on. Clacks on, clacks on. Clacks on, clacks on. Big clacks on. Trigger warning, clacks on. Clacks on, 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 clacks on,